Welcome everyone to another episode of AWS What's Next with AWS On Air. Today, um, for me, it's tomorrow. It's actually 12 o'clock at midnight right here in Germany, but I have a few folks on from the US, I think. Um, I do have the te a team, a um, few members of the systems manager, AWS systems manager team on the show, Indu and Jonathan. Welcome. Thanks that you're here. Um, Indu, Thank why you. don't you introduce yourself? Thank you, Dennis. Hi, everyone. I'm Indu Sivaramakrishnan. I'm an engineering lead at AWS Systems Manager. I've been in um, AWS for over two years, and this is my third reInvent. Oh, nice. Super, super happy to be here. <laughs> Great. What about you, Jonathan? Yeah, I'm Jonathan Hayes. I'm one of the product managers with the AWS Systems Manager team. And Indu and I joined just about the same time, so also a little over two years and third reInvent. That's exciting. For everyone, uh, if you have any questions for the for me or for the guests, um, we do have a Twitter Twitter handle AWS on air at AWS on air. I will be monitoring that Twitter. If you have any questions that you would like to ask, please do so on Twitter. So, what are we talking about today? Yeah, so we're really excited. Uh, yesterday, Systems Manager announced the general availability of a new change management feature called Change Manager. And so Change Manager simplifies the way that customers can request, approve, implement, and, um, and review operational changes to their application infrastructure and configuration. Mm -hmm. So things like restarting instances or rotating certificates or taking backups, um, maybe routine changes, but you want to make sure you make them safely and securely. And so Change mm -hmm. Manager helps you do that. Yeah, maybe maybe for those viewers among us who are not so much into op the operational issues, I must say I'm a, I've been a d developer all my life, and I I have touched operation the operational side, and I had to when starting <laughs> working with the cloud. But maybe uh, can you maybe just go into a little bit into what is change management and what what actually uh, does uh, does how does that work? Yep. So um, like Jonathan mentioned, right, change management is a process using which customers can request, approve, and report on any uh, operational changes on the application uh, configuration infrastructure. And let's, while I've given you the definition, let's talk about why it's important. And we can take the example of how we do change management at AWS, right? So at AWS, we build large scale distributed software, which have multiple moving pieces. There are upstream and downstream dependencies between the various services and any change in those services has the potential to impact other services. So, and at our scale, it becomes super important that we do these changes in a safe manner, right? And one thing to remember is that customers are constantly using our services while we are making these improvements. So it is super important that these changes be made without any disruption to customer's application. And that implies that we need to have a high degree of confidence while we make these changes. And having a high degree of confidence in, um, comes from having a well-defined set of processes and tools that can help us make these changes uh, really safely, right? And just to go in a little deeper, there are three main things that you can think about when you talk about operational safety around change management. And those are who makes the changes, when we can make the changes and what happens if things go wrong. Mm. And uh, to, to kind of just go into deeper, the first part is about who makes the changes and that's access control. Uh, there are specific guidelines around who makes the change depending on the risk level of the change and who can approve and things like that. And this is to ensure that we have a high um, rigor for operational safety because we only allow appropriate users to make the changes to the systems. And uh, the second thing that I mentioned was around when we can make the changes. There are also guidelines around making changes or not making changes on certain days. For example, like the tax deadline day in US, right? And on certain days, we need to get uh, multi-level approvals from mm. senior leadership before we get to make these changes. Yeah, yeah. Right? Prime day. Uh, oh yeah, definitely, right? <laughs> on on. So our change control mechanisms are actually tied in with the system. So we are super careful about uh, when we make those changes and if we have to make anything on these specific days, who gets to approve and how we actually mm. track these changes. Mm. Right. I see, yeah. So we've been using this uh, for a long time at Amazon and, uh, and at AWS. And the, 
the systems manager change manager basically is the same functionality or a very similar functionality that we now give our customers so that they can um, use the same tools for their own change management processes, right? That's correct. So it's it's very similar with with change manager. You request changes based on pre-configured templates, and so those templates define things about the change, like who the approvers are, what runbooks or actions you allow to to be made through that template. Uh, what safety measures you want in place and what notifications you want to uh, to go out for that type of change. And those templates can be used to represent either broad types of changes like standard versus emergency changes mm -hmm. or more uh, more tailored for specific changes like you could have a patching template or a, a Dynamo backup template. And so having those templates helps you streamline for your end users defaulting the values that that you can so they don't have to fill in everything uh, at the time of the change, but then also providing guidance around, um, you know, how that change should actually be implemented. Mm. So you, uh, you spoke of run books. Are these uh, the systems manager run books that we that we know and have already? Absolutely. So those are the systems manager automation run books. Uh, we have about 70 run books out of the box for common activities like starting or stopping an instance, resizing an instance, taking backup. So you can use those today or customize them to make them your own. Mm. And is that, is, that something, is that something that I can use for my AWS environment or does that, uh, has that a broader application maybe throughout my own on-premises data center and the changes that I have over there? Yeah, it's a great question. So it, it can be used on AWS, but can also be used on premises. So uh, one of the great things about Systems Manager is that uh, the Systems Manager agent allows you to operate on your on-premise instances. So everything you can do with EC2, uh, whether it's patching or collecting uh, software inventory, you can also do on your on-premise instances. And now with Change Manager, you can track all of those changes together from EC2 to on-premises through the same change management tool. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. Is there anything that you can show us? Because I mean, a picture is worth a thousand words, <laughs> as we say. Um, do you have a demo? Is there something that we can look at? I just happen to have a demo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so Change Manager is integrated with AWS organizations to allow you to make changes from a single account in many other accounts across your organization. So here I'm logged into my uh, delegated administrator account. So it's an account that I've designated as my change management or operations account. So here I am in the systems manager console and you can see I'm on the home page of change manager. We give you some idea of uh, what your next steps are and an overview of what types of resources you already have. But what we're going to do today is just walk through creating a change request, approving it, and then watch it implement and look at uh, the record that we have after the fact. Mm. So I will go click on create request. And so now the first thing I do when I create a request is I select which template I want to use. So I mentioned earlier, those templates can be used to define aspects about the change, like approvals or what run books. Um, so right now I'm going to select this standard change template that I've already created. You can create these templates on your own and then require that they get reviewed and approved before use to give you some more uh, assurance um, that, that that template is something that's tried and true. And that's a best practice that we use internally at Amazon as well. Okay. So we click next. Um, so now I can see some details about this template. Here's the run books I'm allowed to, to use. Um, let me see real quick. Let's restart EC2 instance, uh, create roles, uh, create RDS snapshot, stop and start EC2. Oh, okay. So just right. some basic activities mm -hmm. um, that presumably, you know, these, these run books, um, they're out of the box, so we know they've been tested, but uh, you, could, you could select run books that you know, uh, you know have been tested through and through. So we're gonna do a stop instance um, change request. So now we select which run book we want. 
Um, we're going to select stop EC2 instance. And then here you have some information you could fill out about your intent in making the change, uh, what kind of risk level you, you, you uh, presume there would be, um, what your rollback steps would be. But the great thing about this stuff, this information here is you can define at the template what questions should be asked. So this is where you can tweak this template to your own business processes. Mm. So I'm going to just say stop and instance. And this is all uh, markdown enabled. So you can uh, use normal markdown protocol there. Mm -hmm. So now I can decide how that change is scheduled. It either can be scheduled at a particular time and day here, or I can just specify I need this change as soon as possible. So once I have all the required approvers, then uh, go ahead and let me run the change. So somebody wants the EC2 instance to be stopped um, and then they can do they can request the change basically, and you have a specified approval process. And once that approval process has been gone through, it well stops the instance using the the runbook stop e, uh, the AWS stop EC2 instance runbook, right? Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So the one of the great things about Change Manager is the the execution of the change or the running of that runbook is tied directly to uh, the the change management system. So will request this change, but but change manager won't let that runbook kick off until all of those approvals are granted. Okay. And so here you can see the required approvals. Um, so the, the approver name is request approver. Uh, this can be specified from the template and you can either specify uh, you, a user, you can specify groups, you can specify many approvers. Um, and we've also integrated change manager with AWS single sign-on. So in, instead of just being able to bring in your IAM users, you can also bring in your own identity provider. Mm. Uh, so people like financial approvers or business approvers who may not have IAM access, they can come in here and, and still be able to approve change requests. Oh, that's nice. Mm. So uh, this gives an, us an idea of who the approver is. You could also specify that the uh, the requester can actually add an approver. So let's say you have some common changes that you just want some peer approvals for. Mm. I, as a requester, could specify you know who from my team should should provide that peer approval. Just to make sure that you have the four eyes. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So mm. so that's another best practice internally is uh, the two man rule where if you have a high risk change, you want to get. Uh, you know, multiple sets of eyes on that change and make yeah. sure that it's it's thoroughly sure. checked. Sure, right. And and uh, can I can I add multiple approvers or is it always one? You you can add multiple approvers, uh, and then you can add multiple groups as well. Mm. And then if you if you add a group, you can actually specify the number of approvals from that group uh, that are required. So if you have a an operations team that you just need any two people to approve. You can specify that group, and then here you specify the number of approvers from that group. Okay, that's what that is for, the required. Okay, I see. Great. Mm -hmm. A common thing to think through about here is I think when we make any change, it's good to do as many things uh, before the change actually runs. So there's approval, having multiple approvers, and uh, looking at this uh, change and having peer approved and saying, uh, like what the purpose of this change is, the one that Jonathan showed earlier around what happens when this change is executed, what happens if this change goes wrong, all of those really enable us to think through the ifs and buts on, hey, what is what happens if this goes wrong or what should I be looking for, right? That means you've done enough risk analysis and evaluations before the change is wrong. Yeah, we can and, do that once and and put that, codify that into the template so that every time we have that change again, that specific type of change again, we can just use the template and have everything in place, right? Exactly. Mm. That's nice. So what happens if we go to next? So we go to next and now we have, um, so now we're at the specified parameters. So these are details about the actual change that we're implementing. Um, so with, with systems, Man we mentioned that all of the run books come from systems manager automation. And one of the really valuable things about automation is that 
those runbooks can assume another role when they execute. And so um, you can enable your users to uh, init an, an initiate an execution with a particular runbook or with a particular change template. And then another role can be assumed to carry out that action. So they don't need the permissions Exactly. Like, for instance, to stop an EC2 instance, the user them, users themselves don't need the permissions to stop an EC2 instance, but through the, uh, through the template, through the change management, they can actually stop an instance once the approval process has been gone through. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I've specified which role should be assumed. Um, and then we mentioned earlier that this is integrated with AWS organizations, so I can uh, execute across other accounts or OUs and regions, or just within this account. Um, for this demo, we're just gonna be uh, stopping an instance within this same account. Mm. And so we have, um, I can either do uh, multiple resources or a single resource. And if I do multiple resources, I can specify a tag, a resource group, or just stop all instances. And then one of the safety controls we have here is a, a, con a concurrency control. So you can specify how many resources that change actually gets implemented uh, on at a time and an error threshold. So how many errors are you willing to have before you should back out of the process altogether? Okay. And these can either be specified as a number or a percentage. Um, so you could say, you know, I, I don't want to stop any more than 10% of this group of instances at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, similarly, if I just back up for a minute, if we're selecting multiple, um, multiple accounts, I have similar rate control and error threshold settings there where I can specify you know, what we just talked about was within account, but I can specify how many accounts or regions I actually um, make that change on at a time. So you can make sure that that change is made safely and you have enough time in between uh, uh, one account mm -hmm. to another. Mm -hmm. And so, just to call out that all of these things that Jonathan are talking about are actually existing and we are actually leveraging the existing uh, automation service functionality. So we are actually uh, tying in with change management and giving users the flexibility to say, okay, when am I okay with this going? When am I not okay with this change going? Mm -hmm. Right. That really gives them uh, the control. Yes. So okay, we are so, going to run hmm. in this account on a single resource, just keep things simple. So I can select to get my uh, instance picker here and I can see uh, I've already requested a few of these changes already. So there's just one instance left running. So we're going to select that instance and then it looks like it's off screen. So I click next. And now I can review the details of the change and, and make any of, of the request and make any changes uh, I see fit before mm -hmm. I submit for approval. So mm -hmm. I can see what information I provided. Um, I can see the some of the execution details. Um, yeah, basically all the information that we specified. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. One thing I I that is not in the in the request but is in the the template. Um, that I want to mention is we have integration with uh, CloudWatch alarms so that you can specify an alarm to monitor during a change. And then if that alarm reaches a threshold, you can automatically trigger the uh, the rollback script that you've provided. Okay, so that, that's, that's so that helps you make yeah. those change safely. Mm. and that that alarm is specified on the on the template. So that's why okay. we didn't see it as part of this. Okay. Flow. okay. So once you once you uh, once you kick this off, once you say mm -hmm. I want to de deploy this change now or submit it for approval, which it actually is. Yep. Yeah. So we'll submit that. And so now you can see this is in progress. In mm -hmm. a moment, it'll go into uh, pending approval status, and we're going to switch over. I'm going to switch to another browser where I'm logged in. As you can see at the top here, I am request approver. So mm -hmm. that's the um, the person who's required for the approval. So if I go down here, I can see there's one. See, the, these are all my change requests. One is pending my approval. So I select that. 
I can see here's my stop instance CR that we just mm -hmm. requested. And now as the approver, I can um, review the details of the change. I can click into the runbook to see, you know, what, what are the actual steps this runbook is doing? What's the action that's going to be taken? Um, and I can see all of the, the um, configurations. Here's that CloudWatch alarm that would be specified at the template level um, and any previous comments. So if I want to reject this change, I can leave some comments that say, hey, you know, you need to change this parameter mm. or you need to change this setting. And then they can resubmit with those uh, and that, that comment log will be saved. Okay. So now I approve and I can um, leave some comments. And so that will go through the approval process. And so we mentioned that that the runbook execution is tied directly to that change request. So we won't be able, only now that I've approved, can that runbook kick off. But not mm -hmm. only will it gate the runbook kicking off, it also will only allow you to take the parameters that I provided in the request and that were subsequently approved. So you can't, after the approval, tweak what those parameters are. Mm -hmm. So is it is it now that I've uh, that you've approved it? Is it automatically being executed now? It is. It is. So so we had specified that it should run as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So if we go back, we're we're now back in the requester account, um, and so we should be able to see here's the stop instance CR. So it's now scheduled, which mm -hmm. basically means it's it's been approved. Um, I can click into this change request. And we can actually see the timeline of events here. So we can see that uh, it was sent for um, sent for review. Here's a reviewer. We can see that it was approved at this time. And then the actual run book uh, was kicked off. Yeah, I see. OK. So as so, hmm? sorry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, one question that I have, I mean, you have you have an, a manual approval process here. Are there things like auto approval or or conditional? auto approval like uh, during specific times of days or uh, or uh, you mentioned before Indu, i think uh, you mentioned before that on on specific days when there is prime day for instance we don't want to want to have too many changes on critical systems uh, so we would need an approved during prime day uh, an approval a manual approval during prime day but it could be automatically approved during all the rest of Other the year days. yeah yeah so just to uh, add, add color to that, right? So we actually have integrated with uh, AWS Systems Manager change calendar where certain days are marked as block days and allowed days. And on if you are executing a change on a block day, then you need to get another set of approver, which you can also specify in your change management settings. Say, hey, this is a specific, probably somebody like a VP or someone, right? Who mm -hmm. can approve even though if it's a block day, because at times we do need to execute change to mitigate something. So okay. we've also integrated with uh, the change calendar uh, system here. That way mm -hmm. you can, you, that way you have the flexibility uh, to tune that. Okay, that's cool. All right, I think um, that was really interesting. That was a lot of information at one time. I'm the, one of the most important things for our customers really is when is this feature available? Yeah, so it's, it's available today. Um, and so you can go into the systems manager console to try it out. Um, and it comes with a, a 30 day free trial. So um, that's nice. You won't be charged for the first 30 days of use. Okay. What's, what's the cost structure once the 30 days are over? Yeah. So, so like uh, a lot of things at, at AWS, we want to make sure that you only pay for what you use. So we priced uh, with that model in mind. So you're charged per change request uh, that that you create and then uh, per API request. So mm -hmm. um, it's 29 cents per change request. Mm -hmm. And so keep in mind, if, if you're running a change request ac across, you know, to restart a thousand instances across a hundred accounts, that's still just one change request. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Um, and then it's charged uh, 3.9 cents per thousand API requests. Okay, yeah. That's pretty insignificant. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, I think we really need to wrap up because um, as far as I know, uh, we have another session afterwards. And uh, just real quick, I mean, reInvent was really exciting this year. It's been for three weeks for this first time ever. 
all has been online so we got the chance to view from our living rooms or my 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 home office <laughs> video studio here um did you get the chance i mean you've been pretty busy with your own service and and uh product uh but did you get a chance to see anything was there anything that you found exciting at reinvent yep we did i uh, i don't know how i hope jonathan also got the time because we've been pretty busy but uh, i i did catch some of the reinvent talks and uh Uh, I really like AWS Cloud Shell. That's the one that that immediately comes to mind. Um, mm. As a as an um, as a uh, engineering manager, I have a lot of engineers who go through different environments, and uh, they have to keep changing the AWS profile every time they have to use that. Right? This one is just like a pre-authenticated shell that you can just click, and you have access, and it comes pre-installed with a, a few shell like Python and PowerShell. It's pretty cool. I tried it out. really liking it yeah it's really nice really nice you don't have to have everything set up on your machine or sometimes yep. you don't have your machine available where you have all the all the packages installed and everything exactly. yeah that's yeah. that's really great it's... what about you jonathan did you find anything interesting yeah so you know it was a it was an interesting uh new style i did miss being able to meet with customers in person but really liked how it was spread out over these three weeks so that did give us time to actually catch some sessions. So I caught the keynote and I I caught some of the other leadership sessions. Um one of the really exciting features that I think was was the first if if not one of the first features announced was our support for Mac OS. Yeah. And so, you know, now you can you can take some of these systems manager capabilities we've already talked about um like patching or collecting software inventory and you can run those on your uh your mac instances so that that's a really exciting expansion in addition to uh linux and and windows yeah i didn't see that coming that's really exciting that's nice yeah and it was also great to see how that's implemented from a, from a hardware perspective in peter desantis keynote he had a quick video where you could see the mac minis and how they integrate yep. with the nitro cards yeah. and everything that's really nice Okay, great. Indu and Jonathan, thank you so much for being on the show. It was great to have you. I hope it was interesting for the audience. Thank you all for being on the stream. Uh, we will have the next show right after this one. Um, and uh, I think I will see you tomorrow again with another few launches. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Have a great thank day. You. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.